Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Little. I'm a SQL Server DBA and I've been a DBA now for about 10 years. And today we're going to talk about database level auditing. When you're auditing a database, when you're auditing an instance of SQL Server uh, or an individual database, uh, it tracks and logs events that occur in the database or the database engine. And SQL Server audits let you create server audits or database audits and those audits can be written to either the event log or actual audit files. For this demonstration we're going to jump into doing database level audits. And you can see here in Management Studio I've already connected to my SQL Server 2008 instance and we're going to audit the actual EventureWorks database. But before we do that we need to set up our actual audit. So we're going to expand the security folder see here audits. You're going to right click on that and hit new audit. And You have a number of different options here in which you can configure. First is the audit name and we're going to call our audit name AdventureWorks 2008 R2 and we're going to do DDL and access audit. And we're actually going to audit DDL changes and access to objects within the AdventureWorks database for this demonstration. So after we've done our audit name, we're going to choose our audit destination. And you have three options to choose from. You have file, security log, and the audit log. Now in order to write to the security log, it requires that the SQL Server account be added to the Generate Security Audits policy within Windows. And by default, the local system, local service, and the network service are a part of this policy. But if you're running your database instance under a domain account or a Windows account, other than the three services I mentioned, you need to ensure that it's part of the Generate Security Audits policy in order to write to the security log. For this demonstration we're going to choose, we're actually going to do the file. So we're going to click on file and we are going to choose the audit directory that I actually already set up in this instance. Here's that audit directory. And if you're familiar with SQL Server Profiler you have a number of different options in which you can set for the actual file. Uh, you can do maximum rollover files, which by default is unlimited. You can also set the maximum file size. We're going to set the maximum file size to 10 for our particular audit. Now I think I already set up some um, audit files. So what I'm going to do is just ensure that we have a very clean audit directory. Yeah, we already have one set up, so let's go ahead. So now we've created our audit. Our next thing to do is to create our specifications for a particular database. And we're going to do that by expanding the database, going into security, and we're going to do database audit specifications. We're going to right click on this and do a new specification. Here again we have a number of options to choose from. So we're going to name our um, audit specification. We're going to call it DDL Access audit spec. We're going to choose the audit that we had set up previously and this is going to write all the DDL and access statements to this audit. We have a number of different action types that we can choose from. Uh, for our purposes of our demonstration again we're going to be doing DDL and access uh, to any object. So the first thing we're going to do is schema object change and what this action type allows you to do is record or log any event, any change to the to any object in any schema. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is set up for uh, logging anyone who accesses any object in any schema. We do this with this particular action, action group, schema object action group or asset access group, sorry. Okay. So we're going to set these two particular 
action types and then we're going to click OK. After that you'll see that it's expanded here. The next thing we do is go ahead and enable this particular audit. So we go back down here, right click on it, and we click on enable. And then we go back into our database, to our database audit specifications. We're going to right click on that and we're going to click and enable also. Okay. So now our auditing is all set up and right now the engine is looking for changes and access to objects. So now what we're going to do is I have this little query set up that will demonstrate how we access objects. So you'll see here we're creating a table. We're then going to insert into that table. We're going to select from that table. That's our access to the table. And then we're going to drop that table. We're going to wait three seconds and then we're going to run this function fn get audit file. And what this function allows you to do is provide a result set of the actual audit file. And you can wrap this in a stored procedure or uh, to your choosing anything you want to do. So we're going to go ahead and run this. Okay. We're going to see all these particular events. A lot of these events have to do with IntelliSense and us opening this file. But what we're going to do is go all the way to the bottom here. It's going to be right here. And you'll see here these particular statements. You'll see that a create, insert, select, and a delete were performed on tables. What you can do is you can scroll over here and you can see in our statement column the create table, the insert, the select and the drop. So you can actually see the access to these tables. You can see the object, the schema, the database name. You can actually see who accessed it. So in our case it was SysDBA since I'm logged in. If I were to log in with another account, anybody accessing that object, the server principal would be there. Okay. So that's database level auditing. My name's Tom Little. If you have any questions, please give me and please drop me an email. Uh, it's T Little, that's T L I D D L E, the number 30, at gmail.com. Or you can visit me on my website. That's www.thomaslittle.com. Thank you.